In this video, you're going to learn which programming languages you should master first in 2025. If your goal is to get a high paying software engineering job or internship as soon as possible. My name is Amon. In college, I landed six high paying software engineering internships at companies like Amazon, Shopify, and HP. And once I graduated college, I was able to secure multiple six figure full time job offers. And I've coached hundreds of computer science students and aspiring software engineers into landing amazing software engineer internships and jobs in tech. Now, before I give you the answer, which programming languages you need to learn if you want to get a software engineering job or internship, why is this question so confusing? Here's the thing. Most people struggle with this because they're overwhelmed with the sheer amount of information available nowadays. You go online and every YouTuber, TikToker, Instagram Reels creator, influencer has a different opinion when it comes to this. Plus, with the rise of AI and no-code platforms, it feels like coding is not even relevant nowadays. And on that note, before I give you the answer, we should actually discuss, is learning to code even useful in 2025? Should you be learning programming languages or should you just be mastering AI no-code tools? A lot of people are telling me that Amon, I don't think coding is necessary anymore. You can just learn these AI no-code drag and drop tools and just land a high paying no-code engineering job at that point. The reality is that at least in 2025, those AI and no-code tools are simply shortcuts, not replacements. They're great for building simple automations or refreshing your knowledge on a tech stack you're new to, but they're in no way a substitute for deep technical knowledge. Imagine you're at a FANG interview and they throw a complex systems problem at you. Are you gonna open a bubble and hope it knows how to optimize complex memory management? or just ask ChatGPT live in the interview and hope the code can scale to a million users? No, you're going to need real engineering skills to solve those problems. AI no code can be helpful, but they're simply tools in the arsenal of a software engineer and in no way at this point can replace actual engineers. And you and I have both heard those headlines, tools like Devon AI and DeepSea claiming that, oh, this tool is going to replace software engineers entirely. But it really hasn't actually played out. Because if they would replace software engineers, you would see big tech companies like Google, Meta, Microsoft replacing their engineers with their internal tools. Yet it simply hasn't happened and it hasn't happened for a reason. AI is simply a tool and if you don't know what to use the tool for, it's completely useless. Imagine saying that hammers are going to replace all the carpenters. A hammer is a hammer. Without someone to actually wield it, it means nothing. You might learn a programming language and it might become less useful down the line, but the fact that you had the capability to learn that one language means that you had the capability to learn any more that come up in the future. That's the real value of being an engineer, not just memorizing some random programming language, but the ability to break down problems and build solutions from the ground up. Now that you know that you kind of do need to learn programming in 2025 if you want to get a software engineering job, let's actually do a rundown of the most popular programming languages just so you know what the field looks like before I tell you which ones you need to learn today. All right, first up we have Python. Python's big for machine learning, data science, and web development. Then we have JavaScript for web development, full stack, front end, and back end. We have Java, mainly used for enterprise apps and Android development, C++ for high performance applications and game development, C Sharp for game development as well in Unity and Windows applications, Ruby for web development in Rails, Go for backend development and cloud services, Swift for iOS development, Rust for systems programming and high performance applications, and finally R for data analysis and statistics. So that's the landscape. And obviously there are dozens of more niche programming languages, but Pretty much any one that people are considering learning first is going to be on that list. And you're probably feeling unbelievably overwhelmed at this point. I just listed like 10 languages and you're trying to figure out which one or two you should start with first. So how do you know which one to start? Well, the answer is obvious. It depends. It really depends on your goal. I'll give you exactly which kind of person should learn which language first. Here are the two main cases. Case one is someone who's looking for a niche or specialized role in tech. If you already know you want to be something specific, like an Android developer, iOS developer, data engineer, AI engineer, you kind of have to focus on the core languages of that niche. You don't have the freedom to pick something random. If your number one goal from the womb is to do game development, you have to pick a language that fits that. So here's some examples. Android developers, they should almost always know Java and Kotlin. iOS developers need Swift and Objective-C, whereas AI and machine learning engineers need Python and R. Game developers Developers usually cover C++ and C Sharp. High performance backend developers can play around with Go or Rust. And data engineers should definitely know Python and SQL. You see what I mean? When you have a clear niche, the languages are obvious. There's no reason learning Python first if your number one goal in life is to be an iOS developer. But most people watching this video probably aren't set in stone like that. You probably didn't wake up one day at age six exclaiming, oh, I need to be an iOS developer. I have to be an Android engineer. You just want a high paying job in tech in general. So the field is a bit more complicated then. So how do you know which one to start with if you don't know which kind of industry you want to go into and you just want to get employed with a fun, interesting and high paying job? The answer is actually simple. 
it's Python. But the reason I'm saying that is probably going to surprise you. It's not what you think. You probably think I'm going to tell you that Python is the most powerful language out there, that it can do the maximum number of things, that it's on the cutting edge of research today, and that's why you should learn it. And sure, there's a lot of interesting applications to be built by Python, and it is really useful in the world of AI and machine learning. But the main reasons I'm going to tell you to learn Python first is because it's an amazing beginner language, especially for someone who wants to get a job in tech. And here's why. Number one is it's simple and easy to learn. Python has an unbelievably clean and user-friendly syntax that makes it way more approachable than a language like C or even Java. It's universally applicable, so even though it might not be on the cutting edge of certain niche industries, you can do a lot of unique things in Python, from data science to backend development. And even more important, Python is amazing for coding interviews. Listen, if your goal is to get a job or internship in software engineering, you have to be able to pass a technical interview. And spoiler alert, Python is by far the best language for that case. I actually have all of my students who work with me directly abandon whatever languages they know and actually pick up Python to be coached them to use Python for coding interviews because it's so much more effective than Java, C, JavaScript. Mostly because it's so much faster to read and write. You can do something in one line in Python that's going to take you 20 lines in C. And also the majority of interviewers are going to know Python so they can very easily follow along with your code. Python has a rich ecosystem too, so there are tons of packages like Pandas, NumPy, Django, Flask. You can use it in hackathons and personal projects to build almost anything. Python isn't just one of the most versatile and well-rounded languages. Like I said, it's one of the easiest ones to pick up. Now, how does Python compare to other languages like Java, C++, or JavaScript? Because those are kind of the big dogs in this arena. If you don't learn Python first, most of you are going to be doing Java, C++, or JavaScript, especially if you're doing a college degree. Let's start with Java. Now, I learned Java first. I did it in high school and college, and Java is an interesting and useful language, but unfortunately, it's a little bit verbose, and it's not going to be that useful for coding interviews because sure you can do them all in Java then you can do LeetCode code in Java but it's going to slow you down and you're not going to be able to perform as well as you could if you knew Python. It's powerful yet overly complicated. C++ is similar. It's great for systems programming but you're going to struggle with memory management and pointers especially if you're a beginner and you're doing it at a coding interview or you're trying to build any kind of full stack app using it. JavaScript only makes sense if you're 100% committed to web development and has all these weird random issues that come up if you're not an expert in JavaScript. And C Sharp is too niche unless you're targeting game development with Unity. Python just checks more boxes and gets you to employability faster. And you can always start by learning Python and then branching out to other languages later on. The bottom line is simple. If you're trying to get your foot in the door and build a solid coding foundation to land a job in tech, you're going to have to start with Python. Now, of course, in life, you can always try and do everything yourself. But if your goal is to land an amazing software engineering job or internship in 2025, I run a school for aspiring software engineers called the Software Engineering Accelerator. Now, back in the day, you would work directly with me one on one, which is awesome. And I'm still involved with every single single student we work with, but an amazing update is we've actually brought on big tech recruiters and software engineers to take our program to the next level. So you're working directly with me, but you're also working with meta software engineers, Bloomberg and Amazon recruiters. There's almost no other bootcamp or program out there that actually takes engineers and recruiters who are looking at resumes all day long for big tech companies to come on the other side and help you build your resume, LinkedIn, and get you referrals and help you with coding and behavioral interviews. So make sure to click that top link in the description if you're interested in learning more. And if you want to learn how to dominate leak code using Python, watch this video over here. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.